Kevin Jello from SilkscreenNow.com, and um, I'm going to show you how to repair your flash dryer and talk about flash dryers for a little bit. But if your flash dryer quits working, I'm going to uh, this. I'm going to go over that now. How to fix it? Uh, bring the camera in over here. Okay. A good flash dryer has an infrared heat panel. An infrared heat panel looks like this. It is not a coil, an open coil. This is what you want for drying clothes. Um, when you take your flash dryer apart, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see a twisted wire um, and it connected to a heavier insulated wire. And so what goes out in a flash dryer is either the switch if you have a switch like this, the ones I make, I keep it simple. This is a double pull, 220 double pull switch, and I'll explain that later. Or they usually have a little on-off switch here, and I'm going to show you how to replace that. Um, uh, um, these are really inexpensive, uh, but I'll show you how to replace that. So there's only two things that can go wrong with the flash dryer. This wire right here. Uh, heats up after a long time, a couple of years or a year or whatever use, and it melts this, and so it separates. And so what you need to do is reattach that. So you open up your flash dryer, you find out that's the problem. There should the wire should be all right, but if it isn't, you have to get an insulated wire. Contact me, and I'll tell you, depending on the size of your flash dryer, what um, how big a wire, what gauge wire you need for that flash dryer. The bigger the flash dryer, the heavier the wire. Um, the other thing you need is called a butt connector. I don't know, can you see that? I'm going to lay it down there. I'm zooming. It's a little tube. It's a little tube that you slide one end in and the other end of a wire in. Um, I'll give you an example. If you have two, you, you strip the wire down. Um, here, uh, right here. Let's say we're going to use on here. We have two wires that are stripped. You put it one end in there and the other end in there. And you, and when you crimp it, I'm doing a bad job, but when you crimp it, it holds the two wires together, and that's what that is. That's a, a butt connector, and it's crimped. Now, I want you to zoom in on this crimp mark. Can you see that mark in that thing? See how it's punched in there really solid? Now, this is a stainless steel. It will not work if you go to your Home Depot and buy a steel one. It must be stainless steel and special. Um, you can contact me or, and I'll give you places where, where to buy them. The important thing about these butt connectors is you can't just... This is a hand crimp. See that little doodad there? When you push down it, 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 it crimps it, but you cannot use this on this. You need one is like this. This is actually um, has 1,500 pounds of pressure, and you put the two wires in there. And when you um, put the uh, connector in there, uh, anyway, when you put the connector, I'm just going to do this. See how it crushes it? So you have 1,500 pounds of pressure now. I bought this at Harvard Freight. That it's like twenty, thirty dollars, but it's worth having. The other option you have is take a hammer and it just hit it really hard. But you really need that connected really well. Otherwise, the wire will arc and it'll it'll melt away right away. Okay. The other thing when you're putting this down, this metal can't hit the box it'll short it out a lot of times what happens is after a while 
these spring they're they're kind of springy so they actually end up working their way up through the insulation the insulate this is the insulation it's high temperature insulation it's not household and that usually holds it down but sometimes when I get these to repair these that this metal has touched the box so you don't want that metal so you put it under the insulation when you pack it back up and then bring the wire through okay so that's important too so if it your wire has melted down you have to repair it but these panels I, I've had them work for 20 years or longer so they're really worth um, getting you just have to uh, um, uh, take care of them, learn how to fix them if it is your switch, actually, we need this again. So if you have to replace your switch, I'm going to show you this. Okay. If it is a double pull switch what you're going to do here is um, your cord will have a ground which is green right and it should have these on there if not you see what it is you get those at Home Depot this is a hand uh, crimp and then you put a put one of these on home but it should already be on your dryer unless it it uh, shorted out and burned off so if it did you have to replace these three little clips All right, so this will be in an electrical box, but let's say these melted off. So you want to replace those. And you're putting the green on the green um, deal bob there. Okay, and then you put a black wire here. You see that on? And then the white wire on this side. Okay, and so now we got the bottom end of that. This is a double pull, 220 double pull. This on off switch, they're six dollars at Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, and I'll repeat that a 220 volt double pole double pole means you it is actually switching on and off each leg even if it's 120 volt even if it's 110 volt um, uh, flash dryer but I still use this because it's just highly rated and it won't short out or burn up as fast as a the, the 110 so I use a 220 I hope that's not confusing but basically it's still 110 volts but it's a 220 double pull okay so now it's real simple I put and I'm not going to crimp this on here because I, I have to show you um, another one but on the two leads the white leads coming from the the um, dry you put one on this side tighten it down and you take the other one on this side and you put it so that's your on off if you're just replacing that it's easy it's right at the top of the dryer you don't have to open it up but you'll notice there'll be burnt marks or something happened there so replace the switch if you have to get into it 
you'll have to re replace the other one. All right, so now, so that's that on that kind of switch. All right, the next one is these little on uh, these little uh, switches here. They have numbers on here. I don't know if you can see it. One, two, three. Can you see one, two, three? Anyway, if you look real close, it'll say one, two, three. And um, um, I'm just going to use another. All right, turn it off for a second. And let me. All right, come on over here. All right, I, um, during the break there, I what I did is I put these little crimps on there. They're different because they have to slide on. Like that. You make sure they slide on. So, okay. So what we have is our 110 volt power cord. We have a white and a black and a green. The green is ground. And the white, you connect to one of the heat panel wires. And then the other heat panel wire has its own crimp. And it's simply, the hookup is, on number one, you put black. Okay, so it'll say number one there. On number two, you have the single heating element wire. It goes to number two. And then number three is the white and the, the white one and the other heating element wire on number three. And then this goes to ground. So that's how it looks. It's one, two, three. So black is by itself, a heating element wire by itself. And then number three is the white and that. What that does is when you plug it in, it lights up the this light to let you know it's on. But, so if that switch breaks, that's how easy it is. Now, just, these should already be on your dryer. So if this burns out, just take it off and put number one, these will already be there. Number one will be black, two will be a heating element wire by itself, it's white, and one will be white and white, the heating element wire. And you can tell the heating element wire is a different um, type of coating. It's not rubber. It's cloth. Uh, what? Cloth. Cloth. Yes, cloth. All right. So that's the story on how to repair your flash dryer. All flash dry dryers with a heat uh, infrared heat panel can be repaired like that. If you can't do it or you don't want to do it, you can ship it to us, and we have a small fee of of uh, repair, about thirty dollars plus shipping and that. So it's it's actually going to end up costing you about a hundred dollars to repair it where where the switch is five dollars if you learn how to do it yourself. Um, yeah, the other thing I want to talk to everybody about is um, is they all ask about a temperature control switch on a flash dryer. What it what it is, and they're not, uh, the reason I want to talk to you about it is how they work. And I really recommend don't have a heat controller for a flash dryer. And I'm going to tell you why. In electrical heat, you can't turn a switch and just have it go a little bit less heat. What it does, this is a Robert Shaw infinite switch, they're called. And they use them for ovens on a stove and everything. And they're really stupid. They're only good for, I mean, for a cooktop, they're bad. For an oven, they're all right because an oven is a contained area. And what an infinite switch does is when you have it on high, the, is this, the, the heating element stays on. But the minute you turn it on a lower temperature, what it does 
is turn the heat, the electricity on for a few seconds and turns it off for a few seconds. Turns it on for a few seconds. And the lower you go, the longer the space that it keeps it turned off. And on a flash dryer, that is really bad because the way a flash dryer dries a t-shirt is um, it's constant heat on that ink. And if you have it off for a few seconds, it may not dry your shirt. And so I highly recommend, even though somebody's selling you something and it has a heat control, to, that shouldn't be a positive. It, you're not looking for that. It's best to just have an on-off switch. You turn it on, you know it's on. The way you handle temperature with a flash dryer, here you can put the camera on me. The way you handle flash dryer is the distance, not by turning the electricity on and off or having a control switch. So it is important to control the heat is done by the distance from the t-shirt and the heat panel. That's how you control the heat because it's not in an oven. It's out in the open and there's no sense in turning it on and off. So I hope you really pay attention to what I just said about heat control and you understand. If you have any other questions, email me at silkscreennow.com. Uh, I, I hope all this